some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. In today's video, we find ourselves out in South Carolina where a moronic frauditor decides that he wants to push uh, the wrong buttons and, well, ends up with 60 days for contempt of court. Well, that's what happens when you act like a complete, a total moron who wants to act like he uh, knows better than anybody who's a lot more educated than he is. So let's go ahead and sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Mr. Bowler, are you recording again? Yes, sir. Okay. You were advised of that, correct? In what regard? That you can't record at that window. What law is that? The order of the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. I'm not arguing with you. All right. All right? You're going to be removed here in just a moment. You've been told you can't do that. Right? And what law did That's, I break? That order, can you read English? I don't think that's a law because that's okay. the Supreme Court. That's, that's not a that's, legislative branch, the that's Supreme the order Court. of the court. I'm not arguing with you. All right. Um, I'll tell you what, just have a seat. I'll be back with you in just a few minutes. All right. right. Yes, I'll thank you. Me. How are you all? Great. Very good. Good. Uh, judge is a little out of control, so I'm just trying to get things in order. This don't is the First one, Amendment. This is America. Right. So I hope you guys maintain your cool, and we will get through this together. <laughs> are you shook up? Are you nervous? Sir, I am, sir! Do I make you nervous? You know, dude, that laugh kind of gives your whole game away. You really don't have much confidence in uh, what you're saying in this video. You're just doing it because you want to look cool in front of your frauditor friends, is that right? It's okay to admit that you're a moron because admitting it is the first step to recovery. And then you can uh, learn from that mistake and... Uh, well, try harder next time not to be such a moron. But the Supreme Court ruling is not law. Only the legislator can make law, and you guys are law enforcement. And so you guys, I do not believe, are in jurisdiction to enforce that Supreme Court order because it's not law. It wasn't made by a legislative branch. That's why it doesn't have a law code. There's no penal code associated with that. And actually... When you read the Supreme Court opinion on that, it says that the judge may have the right to sanction me. And it's hard to say what those sanctions could be, but there's no threat of arrest that would be legal. Wow, there is just so much wrong with what you just said. While, yes, the, the legislative branch does create laws, the judicial branch does have the right to control their own buildings, per the United States Supreme Court. And so many other frauditors have found out the hard way that they just can't walk into a courthouse with a camera and act like a complete moron without getting arrested. I mean, good freaking grief. It happens every other week where a frauditor comes along and tries it inside of a courthouse and they end up leaving in handcuffs. And this is mostly due to the misunderstanding of the uh, public forums doctrine, which they believe doesn't exist. Uh, but the courts certainly believe it exists. Interesting. If because it's a Supreme Court ruling, right? It's not. If it was, if it was the state legislator that made the rule, certainly it would be enforceable by law. But it's not the state legislator. If we look at this ruling, Boys. it's a uh, administrative order, is what it says. Oh boy, a frauder who actually provided a citation by pointing it out on the wall. Too bad it's uh, something that doesn't really work out in your favor because thanks to you pointing it out, I was able to uh, pull it up on the uh, South Carolina Judicial website. And, uh, well, here's what it has to say about your particular situation. So let's go ahead and take a look at... Uh, the common areas section of this, and it's within the first couple sentences that you are definitely in the wrong. A. Common areas. Persons may possess and use electronic devices in common areas of the courthouse, such as lobbies and hallways, subject to security screening through courthouse screening devices. Common areas 
does not include any counter or window immediately adjacent space used by a uh, clerk of court's office for conducting court business with the public and the use of electronic devices in areas is prohibited. Now, here's the issue that uh, pertains to you. It's apparently that you were recording in the area that you were not allowed to, mainly a window adjacent to areas that are used for uh, serving the public. And so, therefore, you are definitely in the wrong in this particular situation, dude. Congratulations. You're a total moron. It's not a law. All right, well, for right now, I'm just going to ask that you don't record next to the window until we figure out what's going on, okay? All right, fair enough. I appreciate that. He just had it posted there. I wanted to put it on the video for the viewers. Well, dude, I've got a question for you. Uh, if it's not illegal, if it's not lawful to have that sign up or anything like that, if it's not enforceable, then how the hell did you end up with 60 days in jail to begin with. I mean, surely there couldn't have been something that you missed. Maybe the fact that uh, courts can enforce rules on their property, especially rules like trespassing and everything like that. I mean, surely uh, it couldn't have been something you missed, you profound legal genius. <laughs> Yeah, yes. <laughs> Probability of escalation is zero. Because <laughs> all you have to say is, I'm going to arrest you if you don't leave, and I'll leave. And as soon as you say that, you lose qualified immunity, as you know, and it becomes more difficult. <laughs> oh, wait, you serious? Let me laugh even harder. <laughs> Judge has a uh, Supreme Court ruling posted up there saying you cannot record next to the window. I'm um, so attempting to stop the court. No. Okay. We clarified that a Supreme Court ruling is not a law. And so if the Supreme Court had ruled on a case, it would follow under a legislative amendment to the law, which then would make it enforceable by law enforcement. But if you look at that administrative order, it very clearly says that in the extreme circumstance, the judge can sanction me. There's no penal code associated with that order. And so you guys are law enforcement. That is not a law. If that makes sense. And so I don't want you guys. I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't want any problems more than accountability. But the problem is, is at that window, they've been saying things that are inconsistent with what they say later in court. And to say that I can't document my First Amendment right to document a conversation, a private conversation between me and a public official is wrong. And so I would like to somehow challenge that to the state Supreme Court. But he has to sanction me for that to happen. You can't arrest me. And if you did threaten to arrest me, you would use your qualified immunity, in which case I would file a civil rights lawsuit against you personally. And I don't want to do that. So you use, lose your qualified immunity. I can sue you in your individual capacity outside of your law enforcement profession. And so we clearly don't want that. No laws have been broken. A question, you lame brain frauditor. Uh, how many delete laws videos did you have to watch to uh, poison your mind in such a manner that you go out and do this kind of thing with all this misinformation that frauditors like him put out? It's putting the more gullible-minded uh, members of our society into great danger uh, because they... Uh, lack the ability or understanding the nuances of how the law works and uh, believe that Chile's uh, interpretation is the only interpretation. So, yeah, I wonder how many more people Chile's going to end up putting in jail because people listen to this moron. Only the defiance of a Supreme Court order. Thank you so much. 
This judge is out of control. He is an out of control judge and he needs to be removed from the bench. It's a waste of tax dollars for him to even be calling you. He should be intelligent enough to know this has nothing to do with law enforcement. I have broken zero laws. What's your name, sir? Jason Boyle. Mr. Boyle, I'm Sergeant Sayer with Sheriff's Office. I came off a little, little late. Uh, you know, so, uh, again, I came off a little late on. Oh, you're fine. Uh, what, what's, what's the? Singleton's been making like harassing and illegal and bias. He take cases when his friends are the in the cases, and so. We've been contesting his behavior in general, and okay. he doesn't like it. He's on a power trip. He's got an authority issue. He actually gave an officer permission to come onto my property last night past the no trespass signs. He gave an officer, an officer called to serve uh, a summons to my fiance, mm -hmm. and there's a no trespassing sign at the gate, and they called in, and he actually gave him permission to drive around through the woods and come up to our house through the woods. And, you know, he's just an out of control judge. That's so all. What, so what, what's happening today? Like, like oh, right now. I'm just, what, I, I, I'm sorry. Oh, so, all right, all right. So I, I have had interactions at this window where after the fact, the story from the judge is inconsistent with what actually occurred at the window. And so it's my First Amendment right to document any conversation like I can here with you. You're a public official. We're in public space. So I have the right to document that. And that's actually for my own security and safety. So what brought you up here today? Uh, they have a court summons for me. I'm coming to get served. Oh, okay. Someone, someone has a court summons for me. I'm coming to get served my papers. Do, do you know what it's about or anything? Yes, I do. So it's much. because I was in here videotaping to hold them accountable. So my question to you, dude, is do you have any actual tangible proof of any of what you're saying is true? Because otherwise, if you don't, then what you're doing is called slander and slander uh can get you into them some deep deep trouble but yeah no you are aware of the first amendment you say that you can say that whatever you want because the first amendment yeah that's not entirely true because slander and libel laws exist and if you run your mouth without uh, any fact checks then you're liable to uh, violate the slander and libel laws so dude uh, you may have just uh, crossed the line here as far as that goes, which I find freaking hilarious coming from frauditors anyway, considering that, that this guy, he says he's not committing any crimes, yet in the next breath, he's uh, quite possibly uh, breaking uh, slander and libel laws. So yeah, go figure on that one. Okay, so so you're getting summons to court for... Uh... I have no idea. I, they came to my house. They avoided the no trespassing signs, caught my wife in the house unprepared for visitors. And then uh, I wasn't there, so I couldn't be served. So I'm here to make sure that they, that tyrant doesn't send more people back to my house illegally past no trespassing signs. I would just like to be served my papers so I can leave. Well, typically, the, if, if a deputy had papers to serve, they would still have them. Most likely. Oh, sure. So I'll sit right here. Well, them. and you guys are all here. I mean, maybe we can call them up, get them here. And they can serve I can, me. I can figure out who has the papers. Yeah, certainly. So that would, that would certainly expedite processes because once they serve me, I have no more business here. I appreciate you all too. I know you guys get wrapped up in the most ridiculous of all. So I'm just curious, and, and again, I wasn't yeah. there last night or anything like that. You said a deputy came up to you last night. Well, la yesterday, house. late in the day, I was at work. Okay, so they had a summons for you and her. That's right. Her. So did did they serve her? And they did serve her and not me. That's right. Okay. Okay, I got you. Uh, again, I'm just trying to... No, you're fine. Oh, trust me. I worked with law enforcement a lot of my life, believe it or not. Oh, what'd you do? I, I teach hand-to-hand -hand combat, of all things. Oh, very nice. And I worked with the Seneca... Or, sorry, the Sandy Police Department in uh, Utah. Okay. And I actually was fortunate enough after that, I worked with CBRF, the Chemical Biological Incident Reaction Force, which mm -hmm. is a Marine contingent. So I've been fortunate... I was, I was never active duty, but I did work for the military a lot of my life. My grandfather was an FBI agent. We have a lot of respect. We like, my grandfather was an FBI agent under J. Edgar Hoover, right? 
That's cool. My grandfather's that's cool. That's my cool. grandfather's claim to fame was always like ridiculous. He'd be like no, make up no, that no. someone was gonna be somewhere. Not illegal stuff. Like he'd just tell the other officers, I know this guy's gonna be there. Okay. Okay, I got a question for you. Uh if you indeed uh were training law enforcement hand to hand combat, knew the laws and everything like that, uh where did it all go wrong for you? How did you take the fraud or the path? Or here's another question for you. Uh is everything you're saying a complete fabrication? Because well that would make more sense in this scenario because how would somebody go from being uh, uh, training law enforcement and everything like that uh, to being a complete criminal scumbag and listening to uh, frauders like uh, Delete Laws, Rogue Nation, uh, Here's the Deal, or anybody like that. I mean, good freaking grief. That's that's quite a 180 right there. And they'd show up and he'd actually be right enough times that he got kind of famous for it. So they, they just told me that the papers have already been served. Um, no, I haven't been served. Good. I have not been served. Uh, did Dorothy get the papers and not give them See, to you? Can't, or? Dorothy refused service for me. Okay. Uh, she said she would not take service on my behalf. So I have not yeah. been served. So I need to be served. Which unit had it? Was, uh, okay. And thank you guys for being patient here. I recognize it's not you guys. I think your, I think your sheriff's department has some corruption issues, right? Because, uh, Jimmy Dixon came to my house off duty and threatened me, and I'm going to get a police report for that, even though he doesn't want to give me one. He doesn't want to give me a police report, and he did give me a police report after some back and forth, but then he put the wrong date, and he says he came to my house on March 13th. And he doesn't want to say he came to my house on March 14th because he was off duty, and that was the day that Dorothy had a big court appearance, and they showed up just to rattle her cage and threaten our child. They said our child was missing. But the police showing up at your house talking about your child when you're on your way out the door to a major court appearance. Rattle, it rattled Dorothy, it worked. But then I went and filed a FOIA request and immediately the woman at the front desk started saying, no, I was wrong. It couldn't have been Jimmy Dixon, not today on March 14th. And the reason they said that was because he wasn't on duty. I then called the next day and confirmed that he wasn't on duty <coughs> the day before through the dispatch. But then they erased that call from the 911. I actually called and had a long conversation with Chet Crenshaw and Jimmy Dixon. I secretly, I didn't secretly record. It's a one party state. So I recorded some of the conversations, but I didn't get all of them. And so I'm hoping, but they erased, they erased my 911 calls, which is beyond frustrating because that was the most powerful evidence. But I have record of the calls that I made to dispatch on my phone and the length of those calls, one of them 12 minutes. And they say they have no record of any call to dispatch at that time and day. There's four calls missing from you're the dispatch record. You're missing person? You're saying you're missing yeah, they said, well, they were just trying, they just wanted to rattle my wife because she was headed to court, right? Against their friends. And then um, basically Jimmy Dixon showed up and said that my son, who is about a year old, little, mm -hmm. little over a year old, was, uh, hadn't been seen in two weeks and he needed to follow up. I was like, I don't like this. No, you can't come on the property, right? And then, uh, but I said I would bring the kid to the police, to the sheriff's department to check in. It seemed reasonable to bring the kid, but then he said he didn't need to see the kid. And I realized that there was uh, another kind of issue. If you're going to the counter, sir, I'll lower the recording. I'm not trying to record third parties. And if I did accidentally, I will edit them out, out of, not because it's legal, but out of politeness to this probate court can be a sensitive place. Oh man, uh, this is good. Uh, this is the first good thing I've seen out of you so far. You have uh, recognized a uh, moral issue with recording people who don't want to be recorded. Uh, yeah, uh, so there is some hope for you because every other fraudster out there has fallen so far down this rabbit hole that uh, they, st they don't see the uh, issue with recording people who just don't want to be recorded. I mean... Uh, they tend to get even more antagonistic toward the uh, regular people that just don't want to be on camera. In fact, they tend to lash out at them as if uh, they are uh, they're nothing more than, uh, well, peasants out there. As if there's nothing more than uh, tools to be played with out in the field. You, on the other hand, still believe there's a line there. 
Uh, so, yeah, good on you for uh, not completely falling for the BS. Maybe you can come back to the light. Something Judge Singleton doesn't understand. He thinks he's a magistrate judge. Right, so I talked criminal. to the uh, deputy that served your papers. They served them to uh, Dorothy. That's not a legal service. It is. It is not. So those papers are authorized for subservice. They can serve them to any adult within the household. So if Dorothy didn't That's give you... That's so boring. If, I was if, so excited to get served personally. If Dorothy I really wanted that. If Dorothy hadn't given you the papers yet, then you might want to talk to her, but he did give the papers. Uh, I was with Dorothy all morning. No, I didn't get any papers. Okay. So she has the papers. Uh, papers have been served. Perfect. Okay. All right. Excellent. Thank you all. And you if you don't all. mind, I'll be the last to leave just because it's my standard. <laughs> I can't make things too easy. Well, I, I understand that, but, you know, I, I just, I'm sorry. Tell me your first name again. I'm Jason. Jason. I'm, so, I'm terrible. My name's Jason. Oh, that's all right. I'm nothing personal. Would you be willing to do me a favor? What's that? Instead of being the absolute last to leave, would you walk out with me? Uh, sure, really out of together. politeness, but I just want to say one thing. The reason that judge doesn't want me here is because he's crooked. He's a crooked judge, and he needs to be taken out of his bench. And I'm going to do my best to make sure that that happens as quick and fast as absolutely possible. And then with that, we're legally agreeing I have the right to stand here, correct? Sorry, I'll edit you out of that, sir. I, I, I legally have the right to stand here. I'm not leaving by force of law, correct? Well, that's great. I'm asking, you said you wanted to be the last to leave. That's right. I'm asking for a compromise. All right, I'll take it. So, right. yes, if, if I'm the second to last to leave, I'll take it. We're all about compromise. Yeah. Hey, thank you, guys. I do appreciate yeah. your time. I recognize yeah. that you're not the tyrant judge. That, that's somebody different. Well, and, and, and we're not here to say yes or no, tyrant, not tyrant. That, that's not true. That's right. We just want everybody else in the building to have a peaceful experience to the best of our ability. That's, that's right. And I don't want you saw I wasn't filming third parties and things like that. I was no. doing my best to make sure. Even I'm not filming you now because there's a gentleman sitting behind you. So That's fine. And, and, and again, uh, that's all I'm asking for is the just like I promised. No, and I appreciate you guys being so polite and kind. Like I didn't, I didn't know where that was going to go. Our, you know, our goal, our goal is to try to reach a peaceful resolution. To, you know, we understand. Well, right, but realize country. there's corruption within your department. Jimmy Dixon proved himself corrupt, and then Crenshaw covered for him. And so now I, I know that those two are corrupt. And so, like, I, I'm not against officers in general. You know I'm not. You can feel and, that. And you also understand too that we all, you know, if. if I'm not here to, to say yes, no, whatever, corrupt. That's a, you know. I'm, of course not. To me? Oh, yeah, I'll happily come back. where this goes. Okay. Hey, Ron. Hi, Wayne. All right, Mr. Boyle, would you like to delete your recording or be held in contempt of court? Uh, I'm not deleting my recording. Okay. All right. You're in contempt of court. You're sentenced 10 days in jail. Take him into custody and take him to jail. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. And there you go. This moron of a frauder ended up not only getting 10 days uh, for contempt of court, but he ended up getting uh, another 50 days tacked on to that in his appearance before the judge. I mean, what kind of a moron do you have to be to piss off the judge that much to get 50 more days oh wait never mind chili did that only he got uh six months out of the deal oh boy what a moron he is but of course if this guy's gonna follow in chili's footsteps then uh well i wish him luck because he's gonna have a lot of jail time ahead of him because he's nowhere near as intelligent as chili is and uh, well chili isn't very intelligent at all so at any rate guys i hope you enjoyed the video thanks for watching and i will see you on the next one you don't want to go to jail
For what? You read this. Yeah. I don't have to listen to read anything. It. Blah, 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 blah. I'm not listening. Gosh. I'm not. No, sexual oriented protection. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 You suck. They think they know it all. What's the Third Amendment, punk? Tell me the Third Amendment and I'll leave. What's the Third Amendment? What's the Third Amendment and I'll f***ing leave right now? What's the Third Amendment? Tell me. What's the Third Amendment? Most definitely. Because you don't understand why I'm here with a camera doesn't mean I have to get out of here. Doesn't mean I have to leave. Doesn't mean I have to go. <clears throat> that sort of thing. Well, this is what we're going to do. Um, we're going to have to enforce the, the CT and have you leave the property. Um, per the postmaster, per the lead, uh, per the um, the uh, the person, the landlord of this uh, facility. Uh, so with that said, um, I've got too many entities I know. You gave me a warning to get off the property. I got off the property. I need your name and date of birth. No, sir. You're either going to provide or you're going to jail. I'm going to remain silent, sir. Okay. You want my name and date of birth? Put your hands right now. He chose poorly. Morning, Deputy Regan St. John's County Sheriff's Office. Two reasons I'm stopping you. One, Pine Island speed limit's 25. You're going 36. Okay. That's still 10 miles per hour over the posted speed limit. It's 25. No, it's not 25? So, I was going at 35. So that's 10 over. You just told me that you're going 10 over the post speed limit. Oh, no, I didn't tell it, you that. Yes, you did. You said you're going 35, right? Yeah, but I said that's a 25. Said no, ma'am. It's it. The whole thing's 25. Okay. The other issue is your license plate cover is illegal. You can't have a tinted license plate cover over your license plate. How are you? Okay, I'm doing good. Well, you're detained right now. You're not free to leave, okay? Yes, Why? I've been calling after you. You know you're not to be on campus. No. You put the phone down. She yes. asked me to leave and I left. No, ma'am. So you, you guys... You are now under arrest. You guys are arresting me for nothing. No. You know you've been arrested for this before. Dumbass! You dumbass! You're a dumbass. Such a dumbass. You're an ass. Dude, so there's no way I can get in, bro? Come on, I'll put you on my YouTube. But shut up, Wesley. You gotta put signs up, ma'am, if it's- Are you Glenn Serio? Who's that? You know why you're kicking me out? Cause you don't want what, someone watching a movie in the courthouse. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I know some of y'all are disappointed. I'm disappointed. Um, I hope that you will continue to watch this channel because this channel has brought more good than negativity.